The next case we are going to discuss is facial swelling examination. Now, this is a bit a bit tricky one because facial swelling could mean a lot of possible differentials here. It could be depending on whether it is unilateral or bilateral. Now, the information we have got from the recalls is not that much comprehensive. So what we'll assume here is maybe this is a case of a bilateral eye swelling, but we also have to consider the possibilities of the unilateral swelling as well. And the approach will not be that much different other than the fact that the differential list perhaps will change a little bit. Otherwise, most of the things will look similar. The case that I have got from the recall is you are a HMO in a hospital. You are going to see this patient, a seven-year-old boy coming to the hospital by with mom with a facial swelling on the right side as in the photo. So they would show you a photo as well. It was suddenly started. He had a history of egg allergy previously, but it was just a local reaction. So this is another point here. You have a medical student with you. Task is please explain the medical student how we are going to examine this patient. Give reasons for each steps of your examination. Now, sometimes in the exam, you'll see this word here. It says, give reasons for each steps of your examination. And that sometimes confuses people. Like, what does that mean? Basically, what it means is you have to tell what you are, what examination you are, what part of the examination you are doing and why you are doing that. Or in other words, what are you expecting? Which we have been doing in all the cases anyway. So AMC prefers, as I told you in the previous video, AMC prefers people to spend time talking about why they are doing the examination rather than simply mentioning the steps of the examination. So about this case, routine steps are again similar. We go through swipe C and so on. But to determine what we need to include in our examination steps, we have to think about the differentials here. Some of the differentials we have are orbital cellulitis and anaphylaxis. Orbital cellulitis obviously will be mostly unilateral, anaphylaxis, bilateral, dental infections, parotid infections, cellulitis, all, they, all of them can also cause the facial swelling, trauma, and then there can be nephrotic syndrome as well, which can also cause it. So we have to be a bit, you know, we, we need to be a bit vigilant about the information given in the stain to decide what to include in our examination approach. So in your exam, please pay attention to that and then make your approach accordingly. For now, I'm taking this as a case of a probable case of either anaphylaxis or orbital cellulitis. So we'll do it in that way. But if it changes and if you feel like this is a case of most likely nephrotic syndrome, you will have to add a few other steps, which will include the examination of the abdomen and also the examination of the legs. Otherwise, most of the things about the local examination will be similar similar to what we'll discuss here. Now, sometimes in the exam, they ask you to explain the examination steps to the parents. Usually in pediatric cases, this is what they will ask you to do. And the reason for this is because in pediatric cases, parents are a bit more concerned about their young children. And especially when you are doing the examination to a child who is already in pain, then their main concern is the discomfort to the to the child. So in the initial part, when we'll be talking about the swipe C and when we are you know that we often explain how we are going to do the procedure or how we are going to do the examination. We, When we are talking to the medical student, we tell them that, okay, we have to tell the patient we are going to do it in this way. But in this case, rather than telling the medical student, you are directly talking to the patient. So what need you need to do here? As I said, you just need to give a top-level view of your examination strategy. So you will be saying something like, I'm going to examine your child. This will involve looking at your child's eyes, feeling them, and then asking them to move their eyes as well. And then I'll be doing some spatial test. Most of the examination steps will not be painful, and I'll try to minimize the discomfort as much as possible. At any point you feel concerned and you want me to stop, you can let me know. So basically in half, uh, half a minute or one minute, you'll give an overview of the examination you are going to do and how much you can speak again you'll have to find that out by doing a little bit of practice yourself to determine how much detail you can put in the in these steps now regarding the steps of the examination let me first give the overview first and then we'll look into the individual details okay as usual we'll start with the general appearance then we'll do the inspection then palpation because this is the eye swelling we'll do the eye examination in the way we did earlier where we will also include some of the eye tests that we had discussed we'll also check sinuses because we are also saying that it could be because of the sinusitis as well orbital cellulitis sometimes has a preceding cause of sinusitis we have also said that it could be parotid infection. All the parotid gland swelling is not exactly on the face. It's more like towards the side of the face, but it's still to increase our content a little bit. We'll also include this to make it more comprehensive. 
and we'll do the mouth examination, ear examination, and a quick respiratory examination. And as I said, if you suspect this is a case of nephrotic syndrome instead, then in that case, you will change it a little bit and you will make it abdominal examination and the examination of the lower limb as well. So that's how our approach will be. Again, general appearance, inspection, palpation, eye examination, sinuses, parotid gland, mouth, quick ear examination, and quick respiratory examination. So what are we going to talk about in general appearance? This is a case of someone with a facial swelling. We are also including anaphylaxis as one of our differentials. So of course, we have to make sure that the child is alert or not alert or drowsy because we need to decide if we need to take any immediate steps. And they have given us the history of egg allergy, although they have mentioned that it was just a local reaction and the patient did not have any kind of, you know, immediate CV reaction. But still, we'll consider that. Then listen, respiratory distress, we'll check. Again, if you look at the points that I have mentioned in the general appearance, these are mostly to exclude any emergencies because of the anaphylactic reaction. So listen for sounds like wheezing or strider, any swelling in the lips or inside the mouth. If any of these are seen, we'll just mention to the medical student that if any of these are seen, first we'll have to use EpiPen before doing anything else. So that is the tricky part in this case. To be able to remember that, if it's an emergency case, regardless of what the tasks are, first we have to address the emergency, then we'll have to do the rest of the task. And in, in case of AMC, they are never explicit about these things. They will never say that, how would you take care of the emergency first and what will you do after that? They'll simply say, how would you examine the patient? So it will, it will be up on us to decide that this could be a case of emergency as well. I will assess that if there, it's an emergency indeed. Then in that case, I'll take care of the emergency first, then I'll do the rest of the examination. Once that part is done, we'll go with the uh, routine steps now, starting with the inspection. In the inspection, we have to first check because they have not mentioned whether it is unilateral or bilateral. They have just said that there is a facial swelling or there is a periorbital swelling or eye swelling, something like that. So we'll have to check the swelling, where it is, it is unilateral or bilateral, what is the extent of the swelling, that means the area involved, if there is any redness, wherever you see the redness, you have to mark the site where it is, and then we also have to focus on some eye-specific signs, like any discharge around the eye, and then any specific rashes or even any insect bites, trauma signs, as trauma can also predispose to our vital cellulitis. So we can check racunae, battle signs, CSF rhinorrhea. We can check these things as well. That will be the inspection part. Most of the times in the inspection, you will find that you are looking for the same kind of thing. You are looking for the swelling. You are looking for redness. You are looking for rashes. You are, signs, you are looking for any signs of injuries. So once you start practicing, you will start seeing this repetition, this pattern, and it gets easier. But when you are doing inspection, if there is anything specific to that condition, include that and explain that. As I did in case of the trauma signs, I said that trauma can also predispose or increase the risk of orbital cellulitis. So I'll also be checking for the Rakuanai battle signs as CSF rhinorrhea. Then in the palpation, the first thing is local rise of temperature with the dorsum of your hand. You can put on both sides of the face and check if there is any difference in the temperature and either side. You can also check for the tenderness at different places, but because we'll be doing the specific examination of the different parts as well. So you can mention the tenderness during that time, or if you want, you can simply say, I'll also check for tenderness at different sites. Now comes the eye examination. So steps of the eye examination, we have to do the inspection first, then the movement, then palpation. Now inspection part, we'll check for the redness of the eye. So any localized redness, any generalized redness, any discharge, if there is any discharge, we'll note the color of the discharge. It can be clear, it can be pus-like, and it is, it's consistency. Like if it is clear, a thick and sticky. Now, thick and sticky pus-like discharge indicates infection. Clear discharge usually indicates either the viral infections or allergies. And then we'll also check for the things we discussed earlier in the trauma case, hypopion and hyphema in the interior chamber. We can also look for the proptosis. In proptosis, what we are actually, the reason we are looking for proptosis is because of the possibility of the preceptal cellulitis and orbital cellulitis. Especially in the orbital cellulitis, there can be proptosis as compared to preceptal cellulitis. And uh, then after that, we'll check for the movement. We know that orbital cellulitis usually have painful movement but will not be seen in case of preceptal cellulitis. So that's why we can look for that. We can also check for diplopia during this time or when we'll be specifically checking the eye movement, we can do it at that time as well. Palpation, we'll gently palpate around the eye for tenderness and we can also check the sinus tenderness. So to check for the sinus tenderness, we can check the maxillary sinus tenderness here and frontal sinus tenderness here, around here or also around here. And then after that, we will check the eye movement. For the eye movement, you have to mention the motion, the what kind of motion they have to 
do and this is one of the most important if you have already mentioned this earlier then it's fine otherwise you have to mention that if there is any limitation of the eye movement loss of eye movement painful eye movement it usually indicates a vital cellulitis then uh, in addition these are more like the anatomical assessment of the eye structures then there is a functional assessment that means if there is any impairment in the ability of the eye to see or react to the light so we have got four different things to do here, starting with the visual acuity, color vision, fundoscopy, and pupils. Visual acuity, we already know, we can use the Snellen chart to look for this. And in case of children, we can use pediatric Snellen chart. Color vision, we use a Sihara chart. Fundoscopy, before doing the fundoscopy, you can you should do the pupils first. I think it, sh it should have been in the order of pupils and then fundoscopy because it is more systematic to check the pupils first. And the other reason is if you do the fundoscopy first and then you do the pupils, the problem will be that you have already um, shown a bright light to eye. And then after that, you are trying to check the pupillary reflex. So there will be impact of that. Generally, pupillary reflex should be done before you shine light for any other reason on the eyes. Because you know that pupils always react to light. Doesn't matter for what reason you did it. In fundoscopy as well, you will be shining light on the eye of the patient when you are checking the any kind of defect. So it is better to do the pupillary reflex first and then do the fundoscopy at the end. So in the pupillary reflex, you are first checking the size in the, of the pupil. And then after that, you'll be checking the response of the pupil to the light. So you'll be doing both direct reflex and you'll be indirect checking indirect reflex. Now we know that there are other tests like alternate this you know, where you alternately sign between the two eyes swinging light reflex and so on. Don't go into the details of that because we will not have time to do that. We simply want to say that we are checking the anatomical integrity of the eye and we are also checking the functional integrity of the eye. And that's why we did these two tests. Basically they are the same thing however you want to memorize them. This is the anatomical part where we are doing we are focusing on the inspection palpation and movement. And this is the functional part where we are checking the visual acuity, color vision, pupils and fundoscopy. So that will give us some idea about the impact of the condition on the eye. Then we'll do the sinus check. In the sinus check we have two things to do. That was the reason I said that in the palpation part if you want to check for the Sinuses here, it's fine if you want to check it when you are checking the sinuses, that's also fine. Wherever you mention it, you have to mention it somewhere. So you can check for the tenderness and you can do the sinus transillumination. So in case of sinus transillumination, you need a darkened room. And then in that, what you do is if you are checking for the maxillary sinus, so you take the terse light, you put it on the cheeks like this, you ask the patient to open their mouth and then you check if there is a bright light coming out or not. If there is any haziness or dullness, then that indicates there is fluid collection there and then in case of the frontal sinuses again you make it if the room is already dark you don't have to do this but if the room is not dark you make it a bit dark you putting your hand here and you put the light in the, the supraorbital in the in the in the what, what we call this in this uh, supraorbital area and we check in the frontal region if there is any kind of bright light coming out here or not if there is any kind of dullness that shows the fr fluid collection in the frontal sinus so this is how you can check both the sinuses. And in case of the eye swelling, I, this maxillary sinus is more important than the frontal sinus. So if you don't want to mention the frontal sinus, that's fine. But I think it won't harm to mention both the sinuses. Then you ask the patient to open the mouth. The reason you want to check mouth is to check for any gum or dental infection. That could be the cause of the facial swelling. Now you can see that although if we are focused about the periorbital swelling, there are very few conditions or very few things we can check, but still we are doing other, other examination as well to make sure that the swelling is not because of these reasons or there has not been an extension of infection to the orbit. Now parotid gland, we check this just in front of the ears. We first palpate to find out if there is any tenderness or if there is any enlargement. And in case of children who are not vaccinated, there can be mumps, parotitis as well. So that can also cause the swelling. If any information is given about that in the history, that will be helpful for us. So we can check the parotid gland and mouth. And then after this, we'll also do the ear and respiratory examination as well. In the ear examination, we may not get any findings there. We will just do a routine inspection of the ear and we'll, we can do a quick otoscopy to check the tympanic membrane, any bulging redness, any pain or discharge there. And then we can also do the quick respiratory examination because it's, it's still uh, anaphylaxis is one of our differentials. So we can mention that after this, I'll, fo I'll follow that up with a quick respiratory examination. Now, if you find out based on the stain that this is actually a case of nephrotic syndrome, then instead of doing this examination, add abdominal examination 
where you'll be checking for the, the routine signs, uh, routine things we do in the abdominal examinations. You'll be checking the, uh, the kidneys, although you may not find anything specific. And you will be checking the back for the sacral edema and leg for the pitting edema of the legs in case of the nephrotic syndrome case. Otherwise, this is will be your approach in the facial swelling examination.